So you are looking for a god. Just why? As explanation of your life may be, some magic maker of the earth and sky, and whatsoever else you know or see? Think now. What have you in your mind? How will you seek? Wherever will you go? What do you suppose that you might find? And if you ever found it, would you know? How many multi-millions of our human race have felt inspired and hopefully begun their search for God throughout all time and space? And who succeeded? Was there even one? Now you, attempting to discern divinity from any angle of approach you may, have you ever wondered what might be relating you with it in any way? If you need suggestions how to start, or some ideas of anything to do, it might be well to ask within your heart, what kind of God would make a thing like you? If there is a God, then you must be one item of its greatest entity. If there is no God, you may desist, because you cannot possibly exist. Yes, your own existence is a sign of something to be termed divine. Improbable as this might surely seem, it is no fanciful or idle dream. If God is total living energy, of all existence everything may be, and you are but one atom of that plan, you have to be a piece of God as man. Personify divinity by any name you please, but it will ever be the same as if you called it nothing. That would do for finding its identity in you. Why should you be so very faulty then, as one more life among earth-dwelling men? God could intend perfection, it is true, while having imperfections worse than you. Your system stays alive while it selects what keeps you best in health and then rejects what has become unsuitably impure for any useful purpose save manure. Divinity and we both live this way, ejecting excrement and letting something stay as part of us, but choosing of those two which will divinity decide with you? You must determine that by your own will and what you do with your life-making skill at altering yourself to fill the need divinity in you has for itself decreed. How will you know this? Only by one sign. Identity perfecting is divine. All else, no matter where it seems to lead, stems probably from human fear and greed. Your own becoming as a living soul is of supreme importance as a goal in every life that you will ever know, regardless what you are or where you go. Then what is truly yours that you possess? That which you take past death with you, no less, nor one iota more, such is your worth, and all you ever bring to any birth. When you are born, your own genetic trends are all you may rely on as best friends or mortal enemies already part of you by former life experience passed through. These should be modified by how you think and act according to your vital link with life itself as an identity intending who you truly ought to be. Therefore, there is no need to look for God by customs or in creeds, however odd. The simplest and the sanest thing to do is seek it at the other end of you. Do not expect to ever find objective gods of any kind except through images you make 
in your own mind for thinking's sake. Such things will help if rightly used, but are most easily abused. Yet you may sometime realize truth can be reached by means of lies. So you may safely symbolize your feelings or systematize your thoughts, however it seems best, for helping your essential quest. Keep one objective in clear sight and live according to its light, to know the self that you should be as an immortal entity. Continue till you come to know that all above is matched below, and if divinity be true, it lives, as best it may, through you. Therefore anticipate no strange or supernatural sign, neither depend on revelations read in any book. If you sincerely seek some trace of a divine design, be brave enough to go inside yourself and look. Do not despair of the confused conditions that are there, nor waste good time in trying to alter them with any force. Continue calmly, keeping aims and motivations clear, then all will come to sure and certain order in due course. That is the hardest and most difficult of things to do, by trusting your whole life to what seems nothing but a dream humanity has had so long while hoping it comes true and proves our purpose in some special spiritual scheme. Yet what indeed but dreams have helped humanity to rise from who knows what obscure conditions till the present time? And what again will help us ultimately realize the inner implications of our highest cosmic climb? It is in fact our dream beliefs which formulate our fate by channeling our consciousness within the secret way, determining our destiny and spiritual state. So. Have no hesitation, call inside yourself, and pray, Who then are you that I must be? Show me just who you are as me. If you intend to live through me, be my one end eternally. Please manifest to make me feel that I am blessed since you are real. My slightest sense of your control gives evidence I have a soul. Let this same sense of you and me clear and condense till it means we. Then may we meet and unify until complete as only I. Expect no instant answer or direct reply, nor disembodied voice declaiming, This is I. You might experience a trace, but only just, of something urging you, Go on, because you must. Divinity may be the other end of you, but here you are a human, and imperfect too. So ask not the impossible, Prepare to wait until you can improve your spiritual state. Go on how long to what? This you will never find, while yet you live incarnate with our humankind. The only thing of which you may be truly sure is knowing you must find your God and then endure. That is how every single thing gets done on earth. We bring the concepts of our consciousness to birth and then mature them through our human hopes and fears, maybe for minutes or for several million years. How much time and energy was ever needed before the least of things we did in life succeeded? How far have humans traveled and how late or soon have we dreamed deep and long enough to reach our moon? At that rate, what will effort through the eons be until our cosmic credits earn divinity? 
What human mind can know, and what is there to say, except, Have patience, God, for I am on my way. It may be true divinity created man, and formulated places for it in its plan. But in return, we should not be dismayed if we must live according to the gods we made. How do mere men make gods of any sort by their beliefs that a superior force directs their lives the way they think it ought from some mysteriously potent source? All see such power as they would wish their own to be if they were gods, therefore supreme, and answerable to themselves alone, with nothing to disturb their self-esteem. In principle this may be excellent, but as a practice everything depends how humans are, and unto what extent each entity decides as it intends. The dictionary terms for God are plain that which is worshipped. Humans seldom try to worship anything except for gain, or something to increase a sense of I. Men make themselves revolting gods sometimes, incorporating almost every vice or hypocritically concealing crimes of callous and unfeeling avarice. How many worship money and bow down before some status symbol or believe that social recognition and renown would be the highest aim they could achieve. That kind of God is dearly bought indeed by sale of what must truly be termed soul, because it grows from an essential need to unify with spirit as a whole. <laughs>